Having a group of students around the room said, um, there you go, we're starting a new unit, what's it about? Uh, and so they went through, their, their task was basically to see, to analyse the content of those sources, to try and work out what this was about. They quickly worked out that it was the medieval period. And then they started to drill uh, a little deeper. Um, I'm quite lucky that I've got tables that are like proper whiteboard tables. Oh, wow. Amazing yeah. things. If you can get your school to, to buy into them. Wow, none of them. Um, and so, uh, so they, they started getting a little bit deeper into this. And um, once they'd done that, we, we had a little bit of a plenary to think, okay, so, so what is the medieval period about? What's happening in these images? And they started to identify various themes. They saw things like disease, they saw work, they saw farming, they saw power, they saw warfare. They saw the whole gamut of, the med of medieval life that wasn't just knights in shining armour and damsels in distress and torture. Uh, they were basically piecing up the broader picture, this, this breadth of period themselves. But once they'd done that, I then allocated uh, different topics to different groups uh, around the room. And this is where things got really mental. <laughs> because they, started, they entered into a relay race. And so they were allocated a particular theme or a particular topic from within the medieval from within the medieval world, so this group had farming in the Middle Ages. And they took it in turns to go running around the class to find as many sources as they could that depicted farming in the medieval, in the medieval period and brought them back to their group. I think that you can see where this is going to go. They start fighting. <laughs> they start getting really possessive. <laughs> no, no, this is about kings and queens. You can't take it from religion. Okay, they start hiding these things. And the power of this is brilliant because they start to make the connections, they start to see the complexities of medieval life through the sources that they are picking out. And that's when you bring in the Swapsies card or the Corden card. So the final round of this is every student gets given one card. They then get given a few minutes to walk around the room and take one source that they want to use to encapsulate their topic. But that source that they take, they have to, in its place, leave a medieval calling card, saying which group they're from, and which group they're taking, so, and, and which group they've taken it from, to start to identify these links and these connections between those topics. And at the end of it, you end up with this. And this is a thematic map of the medieval period, created by the students identifying the links between these. Um, it's completely random, you know, it's entirely up to what the students identify, but if you look at where these connections are going, I think it's a beautiful thing. They've created that themselves, it goes up as a display, and that's our reference point for the entirety of the rest of the topic. They get to see how religion relates to the issues of warfare and towns and, you know, the role of women and all of that. It's, it's great fun, it's one of the most manic lessons you'll ever run, um, but, it, but it's, 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 uh, it, it's really, really uh, worth doing, I think. The other thing that I want to now very, very quickly show you, because I'm running out of time, is, uh, is another technique which uh, I blatantly stole from Daniel Guyne. If you don't follow this guy on Twitter, get onto Twitter now. Um, by complete coincidence, he's actually doing my old job in Cairo now. Um, <laughs> And he's basically gone in and created a lot better resources than I left behind. Um, and, and this is the idea of trying to see, oops, sorry, uh, this is the idea of trying to start to make connections between individual bits of, uh, of knowledge that we get. This is an image that I nicked from, um, from Heather Fern. She tweets as Heather Bella F. Um, again, well worth following. And she said that at GCSE level, Sometimes we drill so much down into individual events and individual topics that students miss the big picture. Okay, we need to get some more breadth into these topics because we, we require so much depth. And so uh, what, what we were doing is we were taking a look at the causes of World War II. It's often called the road to World War II. So my students built a road. Once we reached the end of the topic, um, they spent some time creating effectively a timeline, but not a scale. But they were creating the road to World War II. Starting, they chose where to start. They always chose 1919 and the Treaty of Versailles, and worked their way up to the outbreak of war and the invasion of Poland in 39. Um, 
Once they'd identified the events that they wanted to, to include, I gave them sheets of about 80 different road signs. They needed to choose a road sign to represent each event. It encouraged them to drill down into what is the fundamental issue that's going on here. Why did that cause war? Why did it contribute to the outbreak of war? Once they'd done that, they stuck it down onto their road, they explained each of the events and how they connected together, and importantly, they needed to show how it linked back to all of the previous things. This is a road. These things are not isolated events. They fit on a line. And that, by the end of that activity, is what they ended up with. Um, their causal essays, which I marked two weeks ago, had all increased by at least a grade. I, I frankly couldn't believe it. It was brilliant. Uh, so thank you, Daniel Guiney, for giving me an idea that I completely ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it.